Over the last 10 years, I've had contact with thousands of Chinese learners, including my friends, my classmates, personal coaching clients, and members of our course. And more recently, I sent out a survey and got thousands of responses from email subscribers and customers going into great detail all about their fears, frustrations, and struggles with learning Chinese. And so the very first and probably most common challenge that Chinese learners face is to do with pronunciation and of course those pesky tones. So struggling with pronunciation is completely normal. There's sounds in Mandarin that do not exist in English, such as zhi chi shi and ji qi xi and zi ci si. They are either don't exist in English at all, or there are other sounds like these, the tougher initials we call them, that do exist in English, but are slightly tweaked in Chinese. And of course there are the tones. Now the biggest complaint we get about tones is hey, I'm, I'm learning all these words and I think I know them, but when I go to produce them in real life, I often get a tone wrong and that's bad. You can easily be misunderstood by doing that because, well, the meaning of Chinese words is heavily dependent on the tone combination. A good example of this is the difference between where, nali, and there, nali. Right? You get the tone wrong in that situation, then that's a completely different meaning and that's really common. So a few things I wanna say about pronunciation up front. First, it is not necessary to sound exactly like a native speaker. It's fine to have an accent, even a heavy accent. Go for accuracy, go for okay, go for good, don't go for perfect. Next, I want you to know that you don't have to have perfect tones all the time. I sometimes make tone mistakes. I've even heard native speakers make tone mistakes, just in the same way that we would mispronounce a word in our native language. Sometimes Chinese people would say words with the wrong tone sometimes. It happens quite often, more often than you think. Also, it's important to know that a tone mistake here or there will not necessarily lead to being misunderstood. Often, native speakers, even if you make a serious tone mistake, like get a completely wrong tone combination with a word, they can still tell based on context what word you meant. I mean, you might get laughed at occasionally, you might embarrass yourself very slightly, but don't worry too much, don't take it personally. Like one time, I very loudly and overconfidently went up to a fruit salesman, I would like to buy some sentences, please. Juzi, I meant to say juzi. And I got laughed at very loudly by these two old ladies next to me. But so what, it's all good, it's funny. You know, you brighten up someone's day with a tone mistake here and there. Now with that said, let's talk about how to actually avoid making mistakes as much as possible, how to have accurate pronunciation, and maybe even native-like pronunciation and impress the socks off of Chinese people. I do make mistakes occasionally, as I said, but I very rarely get a tone wrong, and here's how. Now one of the major reasons why I rarely get pronunciation wrong is because I spent time initially working on my foundation with pronunciation. So first, learn a little bit of the theory. We've created an entire course on this called Pronunciation Mastery, but we've also condensed everything in that course down to 56 minutes, which you can watch in this video here. So just get an idea of how to accurately produce every tone and tone combination, and of course, every sound and syllable, every pinion initial, that's the beginning of the words, and final, the ending of the words. Then after I initially grasped the foundational aspects, the very smallest aspects of the language, the pinion, initials, finals, the tones, I did tons of listening and repeating. Even though I didn't know any words at the time, I was just listening and repeating. I was using a program called Pimsleur, which I would recommend for this initial function, but I wouldn't recommend Pimsleur for actually getting to real fluency. That's what our courses would be for but I would recommend that you listen and repeat a ton. Even if you don't really understand fully what you're listening to at this time, you can just do that and it will naturally give you a sense of tones and it will give you a sense of the pronunciations involved. So even if you don't understand fully what you're hearing and repeating, just do it anyway in the early stages. Spend a few minutes a day at least just sort of mindlessly, if you like, just listening and repeating, listening and repeating. And this will hone your mouth muscles, your tongue muscles, and get you used to the different tongue positions. Because there are some different positions of the tongue and the cheeks and the lips and things like that in Chinese, in Mandarin. And of course, getting used to tongue acrobatics as well, like saying words like chu chu, where your tongue goes way back and then way forward, which you may not be, well, you definitely won't be used to because that doesn't exist in English. So. 
listening and repeating is really, really important. Next tip for pronunciation real quick is learning characters using the Hansa movie method. Now, we actually teach this in our entire curriculum, step by step, but again, we created a condensed version of the method that you can learn for free right here in this video. Now, the reason why this helps your pronunciation is because you learn characters, which is a vital part of learning Chinese, by the way, if you want to get to a high level, you learn characters by mapping them out to different areas of a house or a building in your imagination. And the tones are mapped out to specific rooms. Now, the reason why this works so amazingly well is that the tone of at least a very common pronunciation of every single character is mapped visually to a mental place in a building that you know very well. So it becomes super obvious that, oh, of course it's fourth tone, it's in the bathroom. <laughs> now, this might sound weird to you if you haven't heard of this method, but trust me, it works. Now, we've had learners relearn thousands of characters using this method, and it massively improved their tones as well as other aspects of their language skills. So highly recommend that one. And the final thing with pronunciation is there's a certain amount of wins you can get with pronunciation really early, really fast. For example, me teaching you a certain tongue position on how to say or teaching certain mnemonic techniques that I just mentioned for memorizing tones and characters better. But overall, pronunciation improves over time as your muscles develop, and it's just gonna take consistent effort, not a huge amount of effort, just a few minutes each day, just working on pronunciation, listening, repeating, and of course, immersing a ton. That's really key. Listening is especially important because it allows you to imitate real Chinese people speaking real Chinese. So also try out shadowing, which is essentially listening and repeating at the same time to a piece of audio and getting feedback from native speakers. You can get live feedback, which can be really helpful if the native tutor knows what they're doing and also just sending recordings to people online. Now, the second challenge that we face as Chinese learners is the sheer number of characters and words we need to learn for fluency and literacy. So you do need to learn characters, you've got to learn them, but I've already mentioned the best method in the world for that, okay? So you can just watch that video or just go through our course step-by-step step and have the sort of done with you approach to that. We also provide mnemonics for learning words. And again, you can watch this video for a full guide on how to learn words using mnemonics. You've got to use mnemonics for learning this stuff. It's just not worth doing the rote memorization path. It's too boring and it does not work. So memory techniques are essential and also using flashcards to maintain what you learn. Because you're learning so much in a relatively short amount of time, you need to manage your reviews efficiently. Now, not everyone has to do this, I, I guess. Like some people just like to write stuff down the traditional way and just look at it every now and then. But for the vast majority of us, this is gonna work out way better for you. Now, the most popular flashcard software is Anki, but there's quite a learning curve to it. If you prefer a simpler version, you could try out Traverse, and that comes free with our courses. That's the one we like to use. So as well as mnemonics and flashcards, you should also try the natural SRS, is what I call it which is basically just immersing a lot in the language every day. So if you immerse in Chinese every single day, even if it's just a few minutes a day, ideally 30 minutes or more by watching TV or movies, listening to podcasts, reading stuff, then you will naturally see lots and lots of common words popping up all the time. And you will sort of naturally review these, if you like, subconsciously and consciously. And you will eventually, if you do this every day consistently, you will just be able to produce the language and you will forget words and characters and phrases less and less. Now, the next major challenge for us Chinese learners is grammar and sentence structure. So once you've sort of started to tackle pronunciation and tones and characters and words and you're starting to get a grip on all that stuff, then comes sort of a reality check when you try and speak Chinese in real life and you realize that you find it difficult to string a sentence together. Or, this is a super common one, uh, not being able to differentiate between words with a similar meaning. So for example, how do I use yi hou, zhi hou, and zhang hou? What's the difference between these? Because they all technically mean after or afterwards, but they're actually used completely differently. How do I know how to use them? So the best way to learn grammar is not really to learn it at all. It's to acquire it by seeing the words you want to learn in context of sentences. So if you want to learn a word such as nan guo, which means sad, it's not a good idea just to look at the word by itself with the English translation. And it's not a good idea to just see the word in a sentence with very little context. So for example, you don't really want to review a sentence that's just saying, 
我很难过 ，because so many different words could be replaced in that situation. It should be something like 听说你父亲上个月去世了。我很难过 Then it's a good idea to review the sentence with audio, ideally, and put that in your flashcards and just listen and repeat it a lot. Now, 难过 is quite a simple word, so maybe you only need one or two sentences before you can just fully get it. You just review that sentence over and over again. You listen and repeat, and it's a very common word. So if you immerse enough, you'll naturally sort of see it popping up and hear it popping up. And you will naturally just get it rather quickly. Same with words like car or, or、uh, desk. These are just simple nouns. You don't need to really dive in too much. But there are other words that are far more subtle and nuanced, and they are used in many different situations. And you'll probably need a bunch of different sentences, or just immerse a lot more and see them in different contexts and situations before you fully acquire them. Now, this is not to say that reviewing grammar rules consciously and trying to figure out how a word works or how a grammar structure works in Chinese or any language is not useful at all. You can actually do this, and that will speed up the acquisition of that particular grammatical function. Now, that's not a necessary step, but it's also kind of satisfying, and it does speed up the process a bit if you just sort of study that grammar rule. But don't expect that studying the grammar rule will mean you'll be able to use it in conversation. That, as far as I know, and based on the linguistic research that I've studied and my own personal experience, the only way to really use a function, a grammatical function, use words naturally the way native speakers use them, is by imitating them. And the best way of doing that is by immersing and practicing speaking. And the next big challenge that I think really affects a lot of Chinese learners, especially the beginners and the intermediate learners, is Listening. It can be super demotivating to like spend so much time on pronunciation and characters and making all this progress and starting to understand full sentences in Chinese. And when the audio is said in a sort of standard way with standard Mandarin at a good sort of solid pace, you can start to understand it through reviews. But then you go into the real world or you turn on a podcast or something at native speed that's talking about a topic that you're not that familiar with, that's outside sort of the realm of basic Chinese. And you have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> It can be a real hit to your ego and a hit to your motivation. But don't worry. As much as I know that experience sucks, there's a lot of good news when it comes to listening. But let's go with the bad news about listening first. Reading has a ton of hacks to it, so you can learn memory techniques for learning characters and words. And as long as you know the characters and words that make up a sentence, you might need to look up a grammar rule or something if it's a really sort of a nuanced grammar. But generally, you can understand what you're reading, right? You can just gradually take your time, character by character, word by word, and say, "Oh, okay, now I get that sentence pretty much." But with listening, you either get it or you don't. And sometimes you can even slow it way down, and you still can't get it. And you just need time. And that is connected to the good news about listening, because with listening. To progress, it's really simple. You just need to listen a lot, and you need to trust the process and trust your brain. We are naturally built for this. We are naturally built to acquire language and get languages. It just takes time. Now, I don't know the exact amount of time it's going to take for you to be able to understand pretty much anything in Chinese at native speed, but I would say you're looking at several hundred hours, if not over a thousand hours, of listening and gradually. Building that skill, but you don't need to understand everything at native speed. You can get tons and tons of wins and milestones with listening along the way. So you can first focus on understanding individual sentences and phrases, and then gradually graded readers, and then more basic content like Chinese cartoons, and more slow. Chilled out podcast, and then more fast talking podcast with multiple topics, and gradually work your way up. I can turn on a podcast now, and I can pretty much understand everything I'm hearing as long as they don't have like a heavy Beijing accent or something. But as soon as they venture into a topic that I have no idea about, like politics or something like that, or chemistry, physics. I'm lost, and to be honest, I'd probably be lost in English too. So if you don't get something, don't worry, don't beat yourself up about it. Just keep listening, trust the process, and you will get it eventually. So just some final quick tips on listening: make sure your pronunciation is up to scratch. If you don't have the basic foundations in place, you don't know the sounds very well and the tones, then you need to take care of that first before you can expect to be able to、uh, progress quickly at listening. Another cool little tip regarding listening that is related. Specifically to Chinese and tonal languages, is that listening naturally gets easier and easier, exponentially easier as your vocabulary increases. And here's why. So when you're a beginner, there are so many possibilities because you you don't know that many words. So if you hear a certain word combination, such as 
DNT, then even with the context of talking about some sort of building and going up and down a building and elevators and things like that, you might not be sure because first off, you're not sure about the tone combination and you're not sure if there's another word in Chinese that could be D-I-A-N-T-I, but with a different tone combination to elevator. So with DNT or DNT, maybe there's another word that I don't know about that it could be. There's so many possibilities. But as you get a little bit better and your vocabulary increases, you get to more of an intermediate level, a few thousand words and beyond, you'll naturally be able to just make that instant calculation. It's like, it must be DNT what I heard. Even though I didn't quite hear the tones yet, my listening's not quite there, I know that it was D-I-A-N-T-I. -I. And there's no other common word that makes sense in that context with that pronunciation spelling. So it must be elevator. And of course, you do that instantly and it just massively boosts your understanding at native speed. So yeah, I know there's a lot of you out there struggling with listening right now. Uh, I used to struggle with it too. And like I said, in some categories, I still struggle with it. But don't worry, as long as you follow the tips that I've mentioned and you just listen a lot, even passively in your spare time while doing other things like washing up or going to the gym, etc. If you do that, trust me, your listening skill will get better. Another major challenge that Chinese learners face is finding material that's suitable for your personal level. Now, I'd like to start off with a phrase that my mother used to say all the time when I was a kid, beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> so if you're a beginner, you only have like a few hundred words or maybe one or 2,000 words in your arsenal and a few hundred characters, you just simply cannot expect to have access to a large range of material. It simply doesn't exist. But there's a great solution for you beginners and lower level intermediates out there you can use graded readers. I really like Mandarin Companion. You can also check out The Chairman's Bao and Du Chinese. Now, if you wanna access high level material that's also interesting and more in line with your personal taste, then what you'll need to do is you need to learn those characters. You need to go through that period of just not understanding what the heck you're looking at or hearing or watching. And you need to just do that for many hours before it becomes easy. And there's no real way around that, as I mentioned in the tip about listening. So in order to access that higher level, you're gonna have to push through a little bit. You're gonna have to go through that period of pain and growth before things become easy. This is unavoidable really, no matter how many cool memory hacks or awesome Chinese courses you have access to. So learn to enjoy that feeling and see it as a feeling of adventure. Dive into a piece of material that is clearly above your level and just try and understand it. And then scurry back and learn some more characters and learn some more words and maybe invest some time in some graded material, maybe some children's cartoons. And then after a while, dive back into that harder native material and see how you fare. I heard this motivational speaker once give the analogy between a buffalo and a cow in the rain. So when it rains, what's the difference between these two animals? How do they act differently? The cows run away from the storm, whereas the buffalo, they run towards the storm and they get through it quicker. So you're gonna face that storm as a Chinese learner, but the faster you just go through it and accept that you aren't that good and just listen more and speak more, get through that challenge and try and smile and just enjoy the process, the faster you do that, the faster you get through it, and the faster you'll be reading Lord of the Rings in Chinese. The next big challenge is finding native speakers. So people get in touch with us pretty regularly about their lack of Chinese people around them and how that basically negatively impacts their immersion and speaking ability. It can feel isolating, right? When you have like one Chinese restaurant in your entire city or town and you don't really have access, you don't have the opportunity to use the Chinese or at least you feel like you don't. It can be isolating, trust me, I get that, but Living in China, like I do right now, does not mean you'll become fluent in Chinese, trust me. I know non-Chinese people that have lived in China for decades, literally, and they do not speak much more than ni hao, okay? The best benefit of being in China or around lots of Chinese people is really more the reminder. It's like, hey, you're here and there's lots of people, lots of opportunities here that is currently going to waste because you're not progressing at the language. So go and study kind of thing. But that's it. It does not directly help you. So the solution to this, the real solution to feeling isolated and not having enough Chinese people is to use technology, right? So use the phones and the tablets and the computers that we have 
and find apps for immersion. So for example, podcasts, Netflix, this sort of thing. And when it comes to speaking, there's a wide range of speaking apps. I always just go with italki because I like to just pay for high quality lessons and they're pretty easy to find. But you can also go for free language exchanges and Tandem and HelloTalk are fantastic for this. So that's kind of it really. That's the challenge done, right? There's no challenge really that exists regarding this anymore unless you create one in your own mind. The technology exists to help you. The next major challenge Chinese learners tend to face is one of uncertainty. That feeling of what exactly should I be doing now to achieve my goal of fluency, which I assume that's what it is, right? We all want to speak fluent Chinese. And another big question people have is, is the thing I'm doing, whether that's the app or the Chinese course or the tool or just the techniques that I'm using currently, my study plan in general, is it actually getting me to where I want to go? One thing that I know Chinese learners out there crave is structure. And that's why Phil and I built our series of Chinese courses. We literally built a step-by-step -step process that takes you by the hand from zero or beginner slash low intermediate level all the way to pretty much whatever level you want. And we guide you every step of the way, along with great customer support and a really nice community aspect to the whole thing. And the reason why is because while we were learning Chinese, we found a lack of structure. And where there was structure, such as with universities or paid courses, man, did they suck. Like they did not get the results. It was really not fun. In fact, we knew like people that had been in universities, because Phil and I both went to a Chinese university to learn Chinese. I dropped out after one semester, but Phil stayed for the whole thing. And we knew people that were in university for four or even five years, and they were not fluent in Chinese, not even close to fluent. And we occasionally would ask them, it's like, why are you still here kind of thing? And they would say, I like it for the structure. <laughs> it gets me out of bed and it forces me to spend some time with Chinese, you know? So that just shows you how much people crave that. We get it. And we also, as human beings, we fear loss. We fear doing something for a long time, spending a lot of energy and time and money and not getting results for that. It's a horrible feeling. Now, I haven't had this feeling of uncertainty for many years. I've known for a long, long time exactly what I need to do to get to my next level. And that's because I have a deep understanding of the language acquisition process. And here it is in a nutshell. Step one, you build, you develop pronunciation, a base vocabulary of around 1,000 words, and you make your way to 3,000 characters. You don't have to master 3,000 characters before you can go to step two, but you need at least a few hundred common characters and around 1,000 common words. Build, okay? That's your foundation. And upon that foundation, you can start to get. That's step two, which basically just means get comprehensible input into your brain somehow. So preferably through listening, Watching is nice as well. Watching TV and movies, that's really good because you can also combine it with reading, as in reading the subtitles. So you build, you develop that foundation, and then you get a lot. You start immersing a lot in the language. And then as you immerse every day, spend most of your time doing that, by the way, you'll naturally be able to start producing the language and you'll naturally start to understand the language more too. And then you move on to stage three and gradually start activating the language through speaking and writing practice output. So this is not something we just made up. I mean, the whole build, get, activate thing, we kind of coined that. But the actual process, the process of language acquisition has been proven pretty extensively in many, many linguistic studies. So if you just follow this process of build, get, activate, you will naturally just get way better at the language. So if you're a beginner, focus most of your time on building and maybe 10, 20% of your time on immersing, getting. And once you've completed the build stage, you can just move on purely to immersion with a bit of activation thrown in. And then once you get to the point where you can understand and produce the language with relative ease, so you're approaching fluency, you can go 50-50 on immersion and output and really perfect your speaking ability. So there's the plan, and that is a solid plan, trust me. Now you're certain about how to actually proceed. The next major challenge for us Chinese learners is the one of overwhelm. So the sheer amount of stuff we have to learn and remember can get intimidating and even demotivating at times because it feels like standing at the bottom of a mountain and you climb one mountain and you realize there's another mountain just there. <laughs> Maybe you feel like your tones are still not up to scratch. You're still making too many mistakes in pronunciation. You still feel like you're not grasping tones after hours and hours of practice, or maybe your listening is still not there and it's very frustrating. You've been listening a lot and because it's a mainly subconscious process, you're just not seeing that concrete 
milestone achievement with that. You find yourself forgetting words, forgetting characters, and having to keep reminding yourself or look up the same thing over and over again, that kind of thing. So my first tip with this, and I've kind of already mentioned this before, but make sure you trust the process. Know that the process that I've laid out for you here in this video is the best way to acquire Chinese or any language, really. If you keep immersing in the language, as long as you have a strong foundation that we've already discussed, you will naturally be able to produce the language and then you just practice producing it, okay? If you follow that process, you will see results. Sometimes with uh, more subconscious activities like listening, you'll feel like you're not making progress even after lots of practice and yeah, it's subconscious, right? So you don't have a teacher telling you you've progressed or textbook questions at the end of a chapter that you can just sort of tick off, like, yay, I've done it. But just know that if you are immersing and you are listening every day, you are naturally making progress. Next, just take it one character, one word at a time. Live in the present moment with this, all right? So you find that you're forgetting one character over and over again. It's like the fifth time you've looked it up. Okay, take some time, take one minute to remake your movie scene, as we call it, or a mnemonic of some kind. Create a flashcard for it. Take that extra minute or two and just solidify it, focus on it, hone in on it and then it's very unlikely that will be an issue from then on. Often you're just like, oh, I'm gonna forget it again, but then you don't bother doing what I just said because there's so many characters to learn, but don't worry about those other characters. Just focus on that one character or that one word that you're having problems with. Next, I want you to celebrate milestones often, more often than you might think is reasonable. So every 100 characters that you learn or every time that you finish your flashcard reviews for the day, maybe you have your first conversation that went really well in Chinese, or you found a really good tutor that you like. It doesn't have to be about your performance entirely. It could just be about maybe you purchased a book in Chinese and you put it next to your toilet or you put it next to uh, your desk where you're gonna see it every day. Even if that doesn't mean that you're better at Chinese, you've taken steps to make Chinese more of a part of your life, okay? So reward yourself with snack or walk in the park or some family time, or whatever you consider a decent reward for that achievement. And finally, I want you to enjoy the journey. It's all about the journey because you make it to B2 fluency, awesome, right? But then you're gonna be like, well, I want C1 fluency now, or I wanna go to a different language. You know, you're never done. And then of course you've got to maintain that level as well by regularly sort of practicing and immersing in the language. So even if you get to C1 or C2 or essentially native level and beyond, you're never done with the language. There's Chinese scholars, okay? People that have a vocabulary of like 50,000 words and are really articulate. Even they are never going to master Chinese. They're never gonna to get to the end. It's a journey that never ends. Therefore, don't worry about the destination because there is no destination. You have to enjoy your life every single day as a Chinese learner. This next challenge is somewhat related to the last two, but I feel it deserves its own point. And that is the feeling of slow progress. So even if you know that you have the best techniques, you have the best courses, you have the best tutors, and you have the best methods and techniques and tools for acquiring Chinese, it can still feel really slow sometimes, especially in the beginning. So we've estimated that it takes most learners to get to B2 fluency, it takes them thousands of hours. And that's sort of trial and error, doing things wrong, being confused, etc. Now with our courses, we could probably get you there in around a thousand hours. So even if you do have our courses, which we humbly believe are the fastest, most efficient path to fluency, it's still gonna take you a thousand hours, which means, you know, most people have an hour or two a day and we're looking at many, many months of consistent effort there, right? And as I've mentioned, real acquisition, while it's awesome and it feels good when you do notice a breakthrough, when you're not having a breakthrough, it is purely subconscious and you can't see or feel it day to day necessarily. And to make matters worse, learners, including myself, have a terrible habit of comparing themselves to other learners. Please don't do this, <laughs> all right? Because you don't know the full story about what someone else is doing to make this rapid progress with Chinese. You don't know how much work has gone on behind closed doors, and you also don't know what natural abilities they already have. They may just be way smarter than you, <laughs> or they may have some natural affinity for language. And at the end of the day, to quote Baz Luhrmann's famous song, the race is long, and in the end, it's only with yourself. 
Don't compare yourself to others, compare you to yourself yesterday. And that doesn't just apply to Chinese, that applies to everything. It's been shown conclusively in many studies that having any kind of stress or anxiety related to your language learning will massively kill your gain. So please don't do that. And next time you feel like you're not making progress, I want you to look at this picture. So this is from Atomic Habits. It's likely that if you're feeling disappointed with your progress, you are somewhere here. So we believe that the amount of effort that we put in will yield an equal and opposite reaction in terms of the amount of progress we make, but that's not true. It takes a long time to sort of build the roots, if you like, of a language skill or an aspect of your language skill. And if you do it consistently, you allow that progress to compound, then eventually it will shoot up like a rocket and you will make a big breakthrough, but you have to have that consistency. So often when people get in touch with us and say, sucks and I tried to have a conversation the other day and it felt just really slow and I got embarrassed and I've been doing this for so long now why am I not going at the pace that I want to go whenever I hear that I actually get excited because that means that this person is about to have a breakthrough most likely in the next few weeks or so if you've been following everything I've said in this video correctly you've been building roots that are about to lead to a huge spurt in growth so if you feel like you've been learning characters really well but your listening still sucks then guess what listen a lot more and do that every day. So maybe increase your listening by one hour a day, do that for 30 days, okay? So put an extra 30 hours of listening in and see what happens after 30 days. I guarantee you'll notice a difference. On the other hand, if you feel like your understanding is kind of okay, you've got to grips with that, but your speaking kind of sucks, book 10 hours with a tutor that you like and do that over a period of a week or two and see after just those 10 hours what difference you have in your confidence and your ability to form sentences. I guarantee you, you'll have a massive improvement. Volume is key. And as a business guru told me recently, outwork your self-doubt. So if you feel like you're not progressing at the speed that you should, then all you need to do is more. Volume is key. Just do more of whatever you think you suck at, right? And you will see an improvement. It's really that simple. Accept the pain of growth, get to work, and you'll thank me later. And if you want help doing that, this final tip is for you. So of all the responses we've had about the fears and frustrations of Chinese, and there's been probably around 15,000 responses we've received over the years, the biggest, most common challenge that people have said they face is investing time consistently. The vast majority of Chinese learners are hobbyists. We're just doing this in our spare time and juggling that with family and jobs. So understandably, it can get challenging sometimes. But there's a series of simple solutions for you, and we actually built an entire course around this, but I'll just condense it into this few minutes here. The first thing you need to know is that everyone has 24 hours a day, and everyone chooses to prioritize those hours in certain ways. Now, of course, yes, we all have jobs, and some of us have more demanding jobs than others. I get that. But at the end of the day, if you wanted to, with very, very few exceptions, you could make that one or two hours a day and invest it in Chinese. It's all about motivation. So if you wanna increase the amount of time you spend in Chinese consistently, you simply need to make sure that your motivation is there. That when you think about learning Chinese or spending time with Chinese, you get a dopamine release that pushes you to actually do it. I managed to squeeze in at least 30 minutes of immersion and 15 minutes of shadowing slash speaking time of Chinese every single day with my packed schedule. And I do it because I made Chinese important in my life. And here's how you can do the same. First, find your why. Find a reason or a series of reasons for learning Chinese to fluency. So once you've chosen a reason, and there could be many, right? It could be just enjoyment of the language and media that comes with that. So being able to watch Chinese TV and understand it and just show that off as a cool skill. Oh, showing off relates nicely to the other benefit of learning Chinese, which is just massive social status boost, makes you more attractive, makes you able to earn more money, etc. So there's tons of reasons to learn Chinese. But really what keeps me learning Chinese is not, as you might assume, the fact that I run a company that sells Chinese courses. <laughs> That's not actually the major reason why I still spend time with Chinese every day. The reason why I do that actually is because of the experiences learning Chinese and improving my skill at Chinese gives me. I'm fully addicted to these experiences and I get to enjoy them on a monthly, weekly, even daily basis. Here's some examples. Generally connecting with people is like the biggest source of awesome experiences for me. People including my family, my son, for example, getting to read Chinese stories 
uh, to him and teach him Chinese is awesome. Making an entire car full of Chinese people burst out laughing because of a joke or a quip that I said in Mandarin. Even smaller moments like when I was in Melbourne a couple of years ago and helping a Chinese woman order coffee. She had bad English and just couldn't get across what she wanted. And I was there to translate. I just turned around and helped her. And then I turned back to my wife and just the look on this woman's face was just one of just sheer gratitude and surprise. And it was wonderful. So yes, there are practical, awesome benefits to learning Chinese, you know, making more money, business opportunities, getting promotions, new jobs that you might not have been able to get otherwise. But really what we're trying to do by learning Chinese, the vast majority of us is to enjoy new experiences. So what I would like you to do is think about those kind of beautiful experiences that you want. Do you want to go to a certain place in China? Do you want to just go to your local Chinese restaurant, wherever you are in America or Germany, and actually speak fluent Chinese and just see the look on their faces. <laughs> That's just, that in my opinion, is worth two or three years of study, just that alone. So you decide what your experiences are, and I suggest that you write them down somewhere and just keep coming back to those. Think back to those experiences that you want to have whenever things get tough for you. And that will also push you to put more time into this. Another tip for you is to actually connect with Chinese speakers more often, sooner than later. Even if your level is quite low, you're a beginner, go ahead and sign up for an italki lesson and just regularly, once a week or maybe once a couple of weeks, just get online and chat whatever you can. And that will naturally feed that motivation that will push you as well to put in more time. Another thing you can do that's very important is to make Chinese a part of your identity. So decide that you're going to become a Chinese learner or a Chinese enthusiast or my favorite, a Chinese fanatic and make that your identity by casting votes for it every day with your behavior. And you do that by making Chinese an obvious, attractive, easy and satisfying part of your life. Now I walk through how to do that in my habit video here and you can watch that if you want more detail. So there you go, those are all the challenges for learning Chinese solved in one video. <laughs> Please let me know if I missed any though in the comments below and maybe I'll address it in a later video. Watch this video next and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.